Hello, in this video, I'm gonna be going over lesson 5.3 on evaluating functions. Our essential question for today is how do you evaluate a function at a value in its domain? Let's go ahead and get started with some vocabulary. To evaluate a function, you wanna find the value of f of x equals or y equals that corresponds to a given value of x. If you have an equation for the function, you just replace all the x variables with the x value that you're given. In other words, you just plug in the number for x. If it gives you a graph of the function, then you go to the x value you're given and you find the y value of the graph. And we'll look at some examples of that later on in this lesson, so I think that will make sense when I actually show you, here's a graph and let's evaluate it. We're gonna start by evaluating linear functions. My first function here is f of x equals negative 2x plus 11, and we wanna figure out what is f of three. That just means evaluate the function at x equals three. So you're gonna to go to your equation and all of the places where you see the letter x, you're gonna replace with the number three. When you're evaluating your function, you have to remember your order of operations, PEMDAS. We start with parentheses, then exponents. Multiplication and division comes next, followed by addition and subtraction. Here, my multiplication is gonna come before my add 11, so I'm gonna do negative two times three, which is negative six, and then add 11 to that, and we are at five. Let's try f of negative 15. There, just replace the x with the number negative 15. And remember, when you're multiplying a negative two times a negative 15, a negative times a negative makes a positive. So that's 30 plus 11. And 30 plus 11 is 41. Next, we have f of 10. So I'm going to replace my x with 10. Negative 2 times 10 plus 11. Start with the multiplication. Negative 2 times 10 is negative 20. Then add 11, and you'll end up with an answer here of negative 9. Let's try one more linear function here. This time, my function is g of x equals 1 half x minus 7. And we're going to evaluate it first at x equals negative 4. So I'm going to take my equation here, and where the x is, I'm going to sub in a negative 4. And when we take half of negative 4, that's going to be negative 2. So negative 2 minus 7 makes negative 9 as our answer. For g of 12, we just replace the x with 12, so half times 12 minus 7. Half of 12 is 6, 6 minus 7 is negative 1. Now let's try g of 5. You might notice here right away that if we take half of 5, we're going to get a decimal. Half of 5 is 2.5, and 2.5 minus 7 is negative 4.5. Now let's move to evaluating quadratic functions. What makes an equation a quadratic function is that it has an x squared in it. When we evaluate h of 6, we need to replace the x values with 6. You'll notice there's two x values, so both of those get replaced with 6, and we always put a parenthesis around it when we do our substitution. Now that I've done my substitution, I have to remember my order of operations here because now we have more things going on. We have an exponent, so we're going to start with that, then we'll do the multiplication division, and then we'll end with addition or subtraction. 6 squared here just means 6 times 6, so that's 36. And then next I would do my multiplication. 5 times 6 is 30. So I have 36 minus 30, which makes an answer of 6. Let's try h of negative 7. If we replace the x with negative 7, make sure you put a parenthesis around it. If you're going to use a calculator for this, you do have to put parentheses around the negative 7 when you're typing it in. 
Negative 7 squared means negative 7 times negative 7. And a negative times a negative is a positive. So that's a 49. And then here we have negative 5 times negative 7, which is positive 35. Now if we add those together, 49 plus 35 is 84. So h of negative 7 is equal to 84. Lastly here we have h of 9. Again, I'm going to replace both of the x's in the original equation with the number 9. 9 squared, 9 times 9 is 81. 5 times 9 is 45. So 81 minus 45 is 36. Here's another quadratic equation. f of x equals 3x squared minus 4x plus 1. Let's start with f of 0. So 3x squared means 3, parenthesis 0 squared, minus 4, parenthesis 0, plus 1. Okay, order of operations here becomes extra important. We want to start with the exponent. Okay, so I'm going to start with this 0 squared. 0 squared is just 0. So we have 3 times 0, and then minus 4 times 0, plus 1. Now take care of the multiplication next. 3 times 0 is just 0. 4 times 0 is also 0. So I have 0 minus 0 plus 1, which makes a final answer of 1. Let's try f of 5. We have 3x squared, so that's 3 times 5 squared minus 4 times 5 plus 1. And it's okay if you want to just use a graphing calculator and type this whole thing into the calculator. As long as you use the parentheses buttons and you type it in carefully, your calculator will do the whole thing at once. If you are going to do the order of operations like I am, make sure you start with that exponent. I don't want to do 3 times 5 and then square it. I have to take care of the 5 squared first. 5 squared is 25. So we have 3 times 25 minus 4 times 5 plus 1. Then if I do 3 times 5, that's 75. 4 times 5 is 20. And we have 75 minus 20 plus 1 ends up making 55 plus 1, so 56. Last value here for this particular function, we have f of negative 2. Again, replace all the x's with negative 2. Make sure you put parentheses around them. When you square a negative 2, remember a negative times a negative is a positive. So I actually have 3 times 4, then minus 4 times negative 2, plus 1. Now that my exponent's done, I'm going to move on to my multiplication division. 3 times 4 is 12. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. And then I have that plus 1 on the end. Add those together now, and we end up with an answer of 21. Here's a try now problem for you to try on your own. Go ahead and pause the video and give this problem a try. Then when you hit play again, I will have the answers posted. Please pause your video now. All right, here are your answers. F of seven should be equal to negative 83 and F of negative one is equal to negative 11. Now let's move on to absolute value functions. Here my function is f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 4 plus 9. To find f of 3, I'm just going to replace that x value there with 3. So that's 3 minus 4 in the absolute value bars and then plus 9 on the end. Start by simplifying what's under the absolute value there. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. But remember that the absolute value is a distance from 0. So absolute value is always positive. The absolute value of a negative 1 is positive 1. So we really have 1 plus 9, which makes our answer 10. Now let's try f of 12. I'm going to replace the x with 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. And the absolute value of 8 is just 8. So 8 plus 9 makes our final answer 17. Finally, f of negative 1, I'm going to again put negative 1 in for my x. Negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. 
but then the absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5. So to get our solution, we're going to do 5 plus 9, which makes 14. So f of negative 1 would be equal to 14. Here's another absolute value function, g of 0. I'm going to go to my equation here, and I'm going to replace the x with 0. Simplify what's inside the absolute value bars first. And absolute value of 3 is just 3, so we have 2 times 3 minus 1. Well, 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 minus 1 is 5. So g of 0 is equal to 5. Let's try g of negative 9. Negative 9 plus 3 is negative 6, so I have the absolute value of negative 6 in there. Remember, though, that absolute value takes a number and it makes it positive. So really, we have 2 times 6 minus 1, which becomes 2 times 6 is 12, and 12 minus 1 makes our answer 11. Finally here, I have g of 20. Again, I'm going to replace the x in the original equation there with the number 20, and then begin by simplifying what's underneath or inside the absolute value bars there. That's 23. Absolute value of 23 is just 23. So we have 2 times 23, which is 46, minus 1. 46 minus 1 makes 45. So g of 20 is equal to 45. Here is a try now problem for you to try on your own. h of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 9, then minus 7. Please pause the video now and give this problem a try. Pause your video. Here are your solutions. h of 5 should be equal to negative 3. You can see my work right here. 5 minus 9 is negative 4, but the absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. 4 minus 7 makes negative 3. For h of negative 13, I started by doing negative 13 minus 9 and got negative 22. But the absolute value of a negative 22 is a positive 22. And 22 minus 7 makes 15. The last thing we have to look at here is how to evaluate a function when it gives us a graph. When you're evaluating a function from a graph, the value of the function is the y value. So you're going to find the y value at the given x value. So for f of negative 3 as an example, I want to find negative 3 on my x-axis. I'm going to just draw a little dotted line there. And then I want to find where does that hit my graph. It's right here at this ordered pair. And I'm looking for the y value of that point, which you can see is negative 2. So f of negative 3 would be equal to negative 2. For f of 2, find 2 on the x-axis, look at where that hits the graph, and then find the y value at that point. So the y value here is 1, so f of 2 would be equal to 1. Finally, f of 5, again, I'm going to find my 5 on my x-axis, and then I'm going to look at the y value at that point. So at that point here, my y is 4, meaning f of 5 is equal to 4. Here's one more graph. Find f of 1 by locating 1 on the x-axis and seeing where does that hit the graph. And what's the y value of that point? You can see the point is right there, and the y value of that point is 5. So f of 1 would be equal to 5. For f of negative 2, we find negative 2 on the x-axis. We look at where that hits the graph, and then we find the y value at that point so we're going to be at negative 4. Finally, for f of 2, I'm going to find 2 on my x-axis. The point is right here, and I can see that the y value of that point is 4. So f of 2 is equal to 4. Here's a quick try now problem for you to try on your own. Please pause the video now and give this problem a try. Please pause your video.
Here are your answers. F of negative 2, you find negative 2 on the x. You look at the point there on the graph, and you find its y value, which is 2. For f of 1, I found 1 on my x. I can see that that's right on the x-axis, so its y value is 0. And finally, for f of 3, you're going to find 3 on the x. Locate the point there on the graph, and the y value of that point is negative 2. This concludes lesson 5.3 on evaluating functions. Thanks for watching. Bye.